Hi guys, this is Joshua LaForge here at Channel Islands High School in Oxnard, California. Um, I'm going to talk to you real quick about rotational inertia. Now, rotational inertia is something that we talk about a lot in my class um, conceptually. So you guys should know that rotational inertia is just like linear inertia. It tells us how much something um, resists acceleration in a circle. So an object with a lot of rotational inertia is going to take a lot of torque to get it spinning, and it's also going to um, take a lot of torque to slow it down if it's already spinning. And so you should know those things. You should know the effect of rotational inertia. Um, if you don't, this video probably isn't going to help you with that, because what we're going to focus on here is how to calculate rotational inertia because I spend less time in class talking about that subject. So this is the equation for rotational inertia. I is equal to the sum of mass times the radius squared. And I'm going to show you two simple examples of how to use this equation to calculate rotational inertia. Okay, here are our two examples that we're going to use to solve for rotational inertia. In both examples, we have two one kilogram masses connected by a massless rod. In almost all of your AP problems where you have to solve for rotational inertia, you will be given a situation like this, two masses that matter and then a rod connecting them that doesn't matter. That's why they say that it's massless so that you won't worry about the rod itself. The only difference between these two examples that I have on the board is where the center of rotation is. In this case, the center of rotation is right in the middle. It's one half meter from each side. On the other example, the center of rotation is shifted so that it's 0.2 meters from this side and 0.8 meters from the other side. And that's going to give us a different rotational inertia from our first example. Now, so we need to practice calculating this, and we're going to start using this situation. So we use the equation I equals the sum of the masses times the radius squared. And the most important thing for you to understand looking at this, when you see it on your equation sheet for the AP test, is you need to know what that means, the summation sign. I know you know what it means for math. You know it means that you add them all up. But in the physics part of it, it means that you have to add up the rotational inertia from this mass and the rotational inertia from that mass. And if there were more masses, you would add those two. So in this case, we have two masses. So I'll use mr squared to find the rotational inertia of this one. And I'll use mr squared to find the rotational inertia of that one and then add them up. So this is what I will use for both problems. Now, I know in both cases that the mass and the radius are going to be the same, 1 kilogram and 0.5 meters. Okay, that when I solve this, I'm going to get each object is contributing 0.25 kilogram meters squared to the rotational inertia. And when I add that up, I'll find that the total rotational inertia of that object is 0.5 kilogram meters squared. Now, I'm going to solve for the second rotational inertia of the other object. I still use the same equation. I still have two masses that I'm summing the rotational inertia of, but I'm going to have different radii in this case. So let's plug that in.
Now, when I do these calculations, I'm going to find out that one of these um, supplies 0.4 kilogram meters squared of rotational inertia, whereas the other supplies 64. Point six four, I should say. Um, when I add those together, I find out that the total rotational inertia is 1.04 kilogram meter squared. So notice that not only is it important how much mass something has when solving for its rotational inertia, it also matters where the center of rotation is and how far those masses are from the center of rotation. I want to give you one more brief example of the kinds of things you'll see related to rotational inertia on the AP test. All right, so this is the other situation you'll have on the AP test. You're given some weirdly shaped object, maybe a solid disc or a thin walled hoop or a thick walled hoop. If you're given any object like that, and it's rotating, and you need its rotational inertia, usually you will just be given a unique equation for I, the rotational inertia, in the problem. Or maybe you'll be given a list of options and, and told to choose which is the correct rotational inertia. In any case, you then simply plug the numbers into this equation rather than the other one. The only mistake you can make here is by looking at the equation sheet and trying to use your other one, this I equals the sum of mass times radius squared, instead of the one you're provided with. Otherwise, it's pretty easy. So give this, the practice problems a shot, and I'll see you next time.